the General Mills Radio Adventure Theater. I'm Tom Bosley. Welcome to the magic world of radio. Adventure has other meanings than setting out for some distant land, braving adversity, or staking new claims. To Americans, adventure has always meant something more. Standing up for what you believe in, defending your ideals, not with words, but with actions. This is the adventure story we bring you today, of heroism that has never been equaled in our history. 180 Americans against thousands of Mexican soldiers in San Antonio, Texas, at the Alamo. Remember? We shall try to help you remember the Alamo. Today's tale of adventure, Remember the Alamo, has been dramatized from the pages of history, especially for the General Mills Radio Adventure Theater by G. Frederick Lewis. It stars Paul Hecht, and Russell Horton. I shall be back shortly with Act One. There's an old mission chapel in San Antonio, Texas, that stood in a grove of cottonwood. The Spanish word for cottonwood is Alamo. It was there that 180 brave Americans fought for the independence of the state of Texas. Now, I say Americans because most of the freedom defenders didn't come from Texas. They were from Kentucky, Tennessee, South Carolina, Louisiana, Georgia, Pennsylvania, other states, even Ireland. Look at the gravestones of the massacred colonists. They'll tell you. Why did they fight? What were they defending? Whose land was it? Mexico's? USA's? Let's find out. We're being cheated, and that's all there is to it. Well, I don't know. We got the land. How much did you pay for your piece of Texas? Two hundred dollars. Uh, for four and a half thousand acres, you paid two hundred dollars. The going price was thirty, and that's what the Mexicans were selling it for. Thirty dollars for four thousand four hundred and twenty acres. Well, that's all I paid. Huh, two hundred dollars. Somebody's making a profit on you somewhere. You're uh, you're new in San Antonio, aren't you? Yeah. yeah. You just missed the big shindig. We got tired of waiting for them to keep their promises of guaranteed independence, so we just up and took San Antonio. So, that's why there's a provisional government of Texas. I was wondering who was in charge. We are, for the moment. But they ain't going to take this line down. It's an insult to the mighty Mexican government, a foreigner taking over. But to us, it's very simple. We bought the land... We're growing cotton and making something out of it. And no one's going to tell us how to run it. Yeah, my whole family fought in the revolution for independence. I guess they'd be ashamed of me if I didn't stand up for what they stood up for. Yeah, now you're talking. Hey, you see that tall fella just rode up? You know him? Oh, can't say I do. That's Jim Bowie. I'd like you to meet him. You mean the Jim Bowie? (laughs) Yeah, the same... Say, is it true that he and a few fellas fought off a couple of hundred Indians at the San Saba mine? It took him two days. He's a quick one with a knife. <laughs> Always wanted to get myself a Bowie knife. Yeah, but I'd say his fighting days are behind him. He's close to 40, you know. One of San Antonio's leading citizens now. Married the richest girl in town. But he's with us. He knows what's fair is fair, and we're entitled to independence. Come on. He's a good man to know. Jim, this is Almiron Dickinson. He's from Tennessee. Well, hello, son. I hail from Kentucky, but I grew up in Missouri and Louisiana. You here in San Antonio alone? Oh, uh, no, Mr. Bowie. I have my wife and a little girl. Glad to hear that. I have more respect for a family man. I had a wife and two children myself. <clears throat> well, but I lost them. Color. So I kind of live quietly now. What made you uh, come to Texas? Well, it was getting pretty crowded down our way, so when I heard Mexico was selling land to homesteaders, I closed the forge, closed up my back smithy, and wrote GTT on the door, and uh, here we are. (laughs) GTT, 
gold to Texas. <laughs> yeah, but the stupid boy got taken. He paid $200. Travis, I don't care if he paid 2000 for 4,400 acres. It's still a bargain. If it's all yours. And I don't think Mexico will ever live up to its promises if we don't force them. We got to make this provisional government permanent. I agree. And the time is now. Now, if you gentlemen uh, care to join me tonight at my house, you know the place, Travis, on Solandad Street, uh-huh. I shall tell you what I suggest as the means of freeing ourselves. Maybe even have a surprise in store for the both of you. The point is, we cannot let up. We must continue to awaken the country. In New Orleans, a town I know well, they formed the first company of Texan volunteers. And not only that, patriots all over are raising money, sending volunteers, rallying to our cause. And why not? It's in our blood. Who didn't have a brother, a cousin, or uncle, or father at Valley Forge? <laughs> I had kin there. And I'll tell you something else. You want to move in and out of the territory? You got to have a passport. Now, before we get too angry, I'd like to let you in on my little surprise. Come in, Davy. Good uh, evening, gents. It's a pleasure. <laughs> Gentlemen, David Crockett of Tennessee. No, sir. David Crockett of Texas. When I was cheated out of that election, I told the Tennessee voters, goodbye, I'm going to Texas. I dare say, Tennessee's loss is Texas's gain. <laughs> I like this fellow, Jim. Couldn't have said it better myself. Mr. Crockett, we're honored to have your musket alongside ours. My name's William Barrett Travis, and this is Almiron Dickinson. Pleased to meet you. I'd rather be in my present situation than to be elected to a seat in Congress for life. Uh, Dickinson here is from Tennessee. Davy, I think he ought to be part of your special Tennessee arm of volunteers. If he can ride and he can fight, there's room for him. Well, I'm a blacksmith by trade, Mr. Crockett, so I know a horse from the hooves up. And, and I can ride. Good. That makes us an even dozen. Mr. Dickinson, you get yourself cracking and write to folks back home for their help so we can get that Mexican foot off our necks. I was born 20 years too late for the revolution. But my father had a Navy Jack with seven red stripes and a snake on her. Most beautiful flag you ever saw. It's written on it, a warning to everybody. Don't tread on me. Well, Jim, that was fine because the English could speak English and they could read English. But I don't think the Mexicans understand our language. And it wouldn't surprise me if they didn't send a big army up here to make sure we understand their language. His Excellency, General Antonio Lopez de Santayar. No, no. Do not applaud me now. There is nothing for the Mexican people... To be enthusiastic about. This is not a day for cheering. We are disgraced. We should hide our heads from shame and national humiliation which has been brought on us by the Nori Americanos. But, I say but, I can promise you the Ford of San Antonio will be revenged. Now, for that you can explode. Was a good speech, Antonio. Jose Mario, you are Secretary of War. I am the Commander in Chief. The enemy is 365 miles away. Why do they do this to me? Because we are too nice. We give them two years' exemption from taxes so they can get started. Still, they complain about taxes. They are not poor, these tax animals. Two years ago, in 33, they export 4,000 belts of cotton. Last year, 10,000. These North Americanos who we permitted into our country must learn how to obey. If it takes a hundred thousand troops, we shall go. Antonio, do you know how poor we are? Have you any idea what such an expedition is going to cost? Let them have their son, Antonio. It is a matter of principle and honor. What price do you put on that? Five thousand men, not one less. Do you know what really would help? A, 
Tell me, Jose Mario. Get them some new guns. What are you talking about? We bought those from the English. The guns they used at Waterloo. I hear the Kentucky rifles are much better. They shoot further and hit harder. Well, we shall see. Tactics will win. Now go, do as I say. I have an army to train so we can teach these... these sharp Kentucky shooters a lesson. <laughs> Davy, I wouldn't recognize the old Franciscan mission. You're really making a fort out of it. Not me, Jim. I'm rounding up supplies. It's Travis, our first colonel. He's got it all laid out. He's got three guns up in the old chapel and other artillery all around, north and south. Observation posts, guns on the buildings all around the three-acre compound. What we haven't got is enough men. And this South Palisade is weak. No wall, nothing. Just a nine-pounder. It wouldn't be too hard for the Mexicans to crawl up here. Ah, Bowie, where you been? Sam Houston wants to blow up the Alamo. He feels it's too isolated that we should pull back. That son of a gun. Now I look at all this, your preparations. <laughs> Sam left it up to me and... Well, I think he's crazy. I'd say the Alamo's worth holding. Oh, that's your friend from Tennessee? Sure is. Oh, Dickinson. Yeah, that blacksmith's a born artillery man. He's got him cracking horseshoes to use for cannon shot. Well, how do you do, Jim? Yeah, Welcome back. Do. Hey, it's beginning to look like a real fort, isn't it? That 18-pounder covers the whole southwest angle of the town, and every day we build another earthwork to mount the guns. Sam Houston <laughs> told Jim here yeah, we ought to give the Alamo up. Sam got worse than he had. He started his march up from Mexico with four and a half thousand troops. Well, we only got 150 men. Yeah, yeah, but those 150 really know how to shoot and pray. 4,500. But I'd say with our artillery and the big 20 guns, the rifles, the ammunition, why, we could lick the Mexicans 10 to 1. Yeah, even those odds ain't enough. Yeah, speaking as an old Tennessee politician, maybe what these men need is one of my extra special hypertrophied inspirational speeches. Men! Man, get around and hear what old Davy Crockett's going to put in your ear. Ah, <laughs> uh, somebody just told me we could outpray and outshoot the Mexicans ten to one. Well, they got close to five thousand marching up here, and by last nose count, we got close to two hundred. I want each of you to run up one man and a half, three hundred friends, relatives, believers. Three hundred more. And with that total of five hundred, we're going to win. Now, anybody doesn't know a man and a half, why, he can bring in two men. (laughs) Will you do it? A mighty fine speech, Mr. Crockett. That wasn't no speech, Mr. Dickinson. You were hearing the beating of my heart. The enemy are in view. The enemy are in view! Well, this is it, my friend. That bell is tolling for us. And it had arrived. The Mexican cavalry, as far as the eye could see, their burnished armor and red and blue uniforms glistening, San Antonio would be run through at Swords Point. The men raced into town to rescue their wives and children. Dickinson fetching his wife Susanna and daughter Angelina. Jim Bowie got his wife's adopted sisters, one with a baby. And everyone was brought back to the Alamo. That defended garrison would certainly be the safest, they thought. They hoped. We'll see. I'll be back shortly with Act Two. General Mills Radio Adventure Theater will return shortly. All those who could put pen to paper. Dickinson, Bowie, Travis. Dozens more wrote urgent appeals for goods, money, ammunition. Crockett scoured the countryside for volunteers. Weeks had gone by. No answer. Now with the enemy at the gates... It was as though the country was asleep and didn't realize that the front lines of its freedom was at the Alamo. 
And then, to make matters worse, Jim Bowie was suddenly stricken ill. Oh, let, let me just lie, lie down here. All right. Sit, sit me down, will you? Jim, what is it? What's come over you? I don't know, Travis. I had this pain. And then everything started spinning around. Help me to my quarters, will you? Colonel. Jim Bowie, I think he'll recover. He's had a week of sweating it out, whatever the fever is. Couldn't get a doctor over here from town. People are all scared to leave their houses, so we're cut off. I brought in a few volunteers last night, and I got promises for about a dozen more. Well, thank heaven for these youngsters who came in with the women. You give them a message, they hang under a horse and ride out of here at night like the wind. There isn't a bullet that could catch up with them. There go their cannon. Now listen to me, Colonel Travis. I want that palisade on the south side between the church and the barracks. It's the least protected, but my Tennessee volunteers can hold it. They're all itching for a little target practice. Oh, it's yours, Davy. All right, Joe. Senor? Here, my boy, take this letter to Goliad and the other to Gonzalez. Deliver that one first, put it right into Colonel Fannin's hands. What's your right? Same to both towns. The enemy's in large force. Santa Ana himself has crossed the Rio Grande and is expected any hour. We need men and provisions. Give us assistance. All we got is 150 men, but we'll defend the Alamo till the last man. The last man, I mean. They'll never soften us up if they can't hit us. Well, that racket out here. I keep expecting one cannonball to land, man. Can't even be sick. <laughs> hey, now, what do you suppose has got a hold of you, Jim? I don't know. I'm like a cripple. Sure has me worried. Travis? Uh-huh? You take care of this old knife fighter. I'm going to round up my Tennessee lads and make sure they've got the ammunition. Jim Boy, I wouldn't worry if I were you. You're too ornery for any disease in its right mind to hang around you for long. <laughs> Good day, gents. Travis, did you hear anything from Colonel Fannin? Uh, not one word. I just wrote him again. There he sits in his garrison in Goliad, 95 miles away, with 420 troops. Maybe he can't spare anyone. He's afraid he's going to be attacked. Yeah, that's the word, Jim, afraid. I couldn't be plainer the way I wrote him. We're determined never to retreat, I said. We don't have much provisions, but enough till you and your men get here. And where are they? Maybe the messengers didn't get through. I said to him, we repeat, to a brave officer who knows his duty that we call on him for assistance. Brave officer? I think you flattered him. He's had time, but not the will. Round here, if you got to dig up some courage to fight... You might as well make it six foot long and jump in. So, where is this Alamo? To your right, your excellency. Ah, yes. Not a thousand yards away. Miserable, crumbling, ancient joke of a building. How big is it all around? Three acres with buildings all around. It's Jose Mario. Is that a red flag flying from the chapel? I am sorry to say it is. A blood red flag. Blood red? Ah, yes. So they are defiant, are they? Oh, yes. Quiet. Defiant. You, we are requisitioning this house. What is your name? Itori, senor. Tell everybody to get out of your house, Itori. Uh, uh, my wife also? No, we need her to cook. And you will surf and clean up. Now, get food and wine and set the table. Yes. Aro tells me you have received a message from a James boy in the Alamo. I, uh, am afraid to show it to you. Oh, I shall not be angry. What does James Boy say? 
for some reason which I do not understand, Antonio. This James boy is under the impression we wish to negotiate a peace parley. His messenger is waiting. <laughs> he is joking. I have not traveled 500 miles to... to... What? This boy must be dreaming. Give that to me. He signs himself James Boy, commander of the volunteers. The Ulsi Federacion Mexicano. And then he crosses out Mexican Federacion and has written God and the Texas. God and Texas. Well, we shall find out. Will you see the messenger? Of course not. Tell him the Mexican army cannot come to terms under any conditions. I could have told you his terms are unconditional surrender, Bowie. He wants this battlefield. He's come all this distance to make an example of the of the foreigners. <laughs> uh, there's only one language all of them understand, and we shall give it to him. Dickinson? Sir? Fire! Fire! That is our answer. You taking the night watch, Dickinson? He had to. Gregorio Parts is usually at this post, but he uh, snuck off to get his family and some friends. Is he Mexican? Well, not only loyal to Texas, as lots of them are, but he's one of the few locals who can handle a cannon. Uh-huh. He's making contact with about 20 friends who want to fight with us, so uh, I'm keeping an eye out for him. You see anything suspicious? No, uh... A moment ago, the light went out in the Aturi house on the main plaza. Yeah, that used to be one of our outposts. Is that Santa Ana's headquarters? Mm-hmm, his, his sleeping quarters. Yeah, well, they picked the strongest house in town. Hey, it's Gregorio. He's returned. Hey, he's, hey, he looks like he's got 30 able bodies with him. I'll crawl down to the side, and you hold me by the heels. We'll, we'll get him up, yeah. up, up the wall, one by one. Yeah. All right. Okay, Gregorio. Now we're we're making a chain. Uh, grab Colonel Travis' hand and pull yourselves up. <laughs> One more to go. Uh, that that short fellow down yeah. there. All right. You, you got him, Travis. Yeah, I got him. Okay, up you go, my man. <laughs> Man, that's no man. That's Gregorio's son, Enrique. Will you stop jabbering and get me up again? Oh, yeah. my arms. My arms are coming out of their sockets. Well, Gregorio, friends, welcome to the Alamo. How many are we? There's uh, 32 of them, sir. Well, that brings our strength to 182. God bless you, everyone. Now, if any of you can handle artillery, Gregorio will show you. Captain Almiron Dickinson here is in charge... If the mothers and children come along with me, I'll uh, I'll show you your quarters. Jim, you wake and I come in. This this whatever it is is killing me. These pains in the chest. Could it be pneumonia? Now you just keep warm. You'll get over it. Uh, I'm feeling mighty poorly, will you? <laughs> you must be out of your head. That's the first time you ever call me by my first name. This isn't the time for formalities. You know, you spend all your life fighting. And then, when the big one comes along, you, you're out of commission. Jim, in no time, you'll be on your feet raring for bear. I'm no Davy Crockett. He's the bear, honey. No. <laughs> I'm a gentleman at heart. Back and shoot in the man's world. But the love of a woman means more to me than all those victories. Just get yourself well, Jim, so that we can run this fight together. I want you out there with me, you know. I need you. Contingents of the Mexican army arrived hourly, but the defenders of the Alamo were alone. Not one more man or one more pound of gunpowder got through to the beleaguered Texans. 
How much longer could Travis and Crockett and Dickinson and the dying Jim Bowie and each and every brave man, woman, and child, how much longer could they hold out? I'll be back shortly with Act Three. The General Mills Radio Adventure Theater will return shortly. What do you do when the odds are against you? When it's not even a gamble anymore? Do you run up the white flag? Not if you're an American who came to Texas for the good life and the good land and found yourself protecting the good name of American courage. These were not regular army, these 182 patriots. They were doctors, blacksmiths, farmers, teachers, ministers, poets. They were ordinary, God-fearing citizens, and their names should never be forgotten. Nelson, Parker, Reynolds, Reynolds, Ryan, now come on, boys, don't let up. As soon as we pile that earth up, we'll run a cannon up there to protect this side. We'll give them back twice as good as we get. No, no, hold your fire. Wait till Colonel Travis decides. How close to the women's and children's quarters? Uh, can you hear me? I said, how close? I think it's been hit. Oh, Lord, no. I can't go down there and see. i got to stay here by the men. Uh, uh, keep up your digging. I'll tell you when you can grab your rifles. Oh, uh, Colonel Crockett. Where's Colonel Travis? we got a serious situation by these emplacements. We want to answer their fire. Yeah, that's right. An important message. I'm taking charge. No, don't return fire. Hold off. See that down there? All that activity? We might catch a hundred or more if we wait. Look, see. See that work down by the McMullen house? Just let them bring their men closer. And then... Uh, Colonel Crockett, did you happen to pass the quarters of women and children? Not a scratch. Hasn't been touched. Oh, thank God. citizens. I am besieged by a thousand or more Mexicans under Santa Ana. I have sustained a continued bombardment for 24 hours and have not lost a man. The enemy have demanded a surrender, otherwise the garrison is to be put to the sword. I have answered the summons with a cannon shot, and our flag still waves proudly from the walls. Oh, Davy, come on in. I'm getting off another call for help. I shall never surrender or retreat. Uh, I kill that. Never. I call on you in the name of liberty, of patriotism, and of everything dear to the American character to come to our aid with all dispatch. You just write that the enemy are receiving reinforcements daily and will no doubt increase to three or four thousand in four or five days. In less than that. This call may be neglected. I am determined to sustain myself as long as possible and die like a soldier who never forgets what is due to his own honor and that of his country. Victory. Or death. Victory or death. <laughs> yes, sir, they're up to something new out there. Trying to get closer to us on the southeast side. We keeping watch? Dickinson's got the glasses trained on them. I told him to hold off for now. Are you sure you're right, Davy? It's not too good for morale to keep our men from answering fire. We can kill a lot more of them, my All right, way. all right, all right. If you're sure. I'll leave this rule for others when I'm dead. They always sure you're right, then go ahead. We gotta get this message through. Let's get that boy and Ricky. Are you hurt, Davy? No, sir. Only in Salt. Yeah, yeah. I know where the boy is. Good. Give him this message. Tell him to ride with it like the wind to Goliath. Well, they know where in Goliath. Well, the garrison, of course, is for Colonel Fannin. Say. I like what you've written on the outside. What? The people of Texas and all Americans in the world. Colonel Travis, glad you're with us. 
Move the 18-pounder over there. She's ready to be touched off. Where are they shooting from? Hey, come on! Oh, can you see through the glasses? There's lots of activity down there. Yeah, it looks like it. I'd say 50 of them swimming across the river. Here comes some more. Hold your fire. Hold it. Hold it. Wasn't that right? We can turn this into a rout. Captain? Yes, Colonel? Are you ready? Ready and aiming point blank. All right, now hold it. Hold it. A hundred yards now. Still coming. 80. Hold it. 70. And fire! They got cover there. I wish Bowie was on his feet. We sure could use him down there. Hey, Colonel, I'm getting bored firing old Bitsy at those Mexican squirrels. Anything else you need done? Sure, Davey. Get two other riders and torch old buildings where they're hiding. Yes, sir. Baker, yeah. Brown, on the double, follow me. Will you? Travis. Jim Bowie, what are you doing up here? My G, is at the command post with you. Not in bed. Push that Davy Crockett up to All right, come over here. Look, see over at La Valida? Yeah. Those that aren't floating face down in the river took to the old buildings for cover. And behind that are the howitzers. They got aimed right at us. Crockett is going to set fire to the lot. There you go. Is that Baker? Brown? Davy Crockett. Will you look at those flames? He has it up. That old Crockett hell. <laughs> No message from outside, Jim, was there? No answer? <laughs> no ruse, I... Sit here, surrounded and circled. <laughs> that noose getting tighter and tighter. Where is help? William, I'm a dying man and I know it. I hope it'll be. But enemy bullet. <laughs> not this. this. Jim, you're not getting off that easy. You're going to live. Yeah. Now, here. Here, take this rifle. Uh... I couldn't hold that. I'm too weak to scratch myself. I'm thinking with death so close. If they overpower us, <coughs> we'll be a sacrifice at the shrine of our country. You believe that? I wonder if anyone will remember the yeah. animal. Care enough to do our memory. Yeah. Pocket! Pocket! Get back here fast! William. Help me back to my quarters. Dickinson, give them all you have. They've hit two of our cannons. Their guns are 200 yards away. We're trapped. Fire at those gunners. Pick them off like whales. Boy, what in heaven's name? You're back. I don't care. How I feel. I have to be up here. Hey, go inside and take care of the others. Travis, listen to me. They've got a new battery south and another new one north. These walls aren't going to hold out much longer. It's only time. The men will hold out longer than the walls. We're hemmed in on all sides. We'd better all march out and die in the open air. That's nothing. They're leaving. They're leaving. They're all heading back, all of them. They're leaving. That's bad. They're <coughs> regrouping. Tomorrow morning, that'll be the end. Crockett? Colonel Crockett? Davy? I hear you. Let me take care of this man's leg. Davy, gather all the men. I want to talk to them. <laughs> My brave companions... Our fate is sealed. I have deceived you long with the promise of help, but I have been deceived by others. My calls on Colonel Fannin have remained unanswered. Because I thought help was coming, I asked you to remain until it is too late. We are outnumbered twenty to one. There is no escape. My choice is to remain in the Alamo and resist. To sell our lives as dearly as possible. So let us band together as brothers and vow to die together. What is the time? 
time. I, uh, I gave my watch to one of the children. Sometime before dawn, that's all I know. A long night <coughs> for me, which may never be day. Anyone seen Travis? He's also with the children. Lord, it seems just yesterday I came riding into town wondering which street to put up the blacksmith shop. How did all this happen? There's always a moment in history when someone has to pay the price for those that follow. Today it's our turn. Hey, you boys having a party? How come no one's asleep? <laughs> oh, William, you are an amusing man. I expect we'll all be asleep for a long time. They're coming. They're coming. The Mexicans are coming. They're climbing the wall. Don't let them put up those ladders. All right, come on, Tennessee. Shoot, Rito. Shoot, Rito. Pounders out of action. Let me get a shot at those monkeys. Ah, yeah, I got him. There goes another ladder. Ah! They've hit Colonel Travis. The Mexicans have broken through. They're inside our wall. Get your knives out, boys. shooting was over, Mrs. Dickinson took her baby in her arms and a pitcher of water, see if she could find any dying man who needed a cup of cool water or a message to send to her mother or wife or sister. She found only the dead. Her husband, Colonel Travis Jim Bowie, oh, dead. And I was going fast in the corner of the Alamo with a big pile of dead Mexicans all around me. I leave this rule for others when I'm dead. Be always sure you're right in go ahead. together as brothers and vow to die together. Colonel William Barrett Travis asked his men, and so they did, every last defender of the Alamo. They took with them half of the entire Mexican army. The what of Colonel Fannin, who never arrived? What of His Excellency General Santa Ana and his thousands who remained alive? I shall tell you when I return. survived at the Alamo. Further north, Colonel Fannin and his men were captured by the Mexicans and on a Palm Sunday were taken out to the woods and shot. General Santa Ana went to sleep one night in camping on the San Jacinto River and when he awoke, his troops had been surrounded by Sam Houston. He was caught. The Alamo lives in history as a symbol of heroic defense for the ideals of freedom and independence. We shall always look back at the Alamo with wonder. Could we today do the same for the same cause? I think we could if we always remember the Alamo. Mm -hmm.